How's it going guys? My name is Rushcode and today we're celebrating a 10 subscriber special because last Friday on the 22nd of Jan we went from 9 subscribers on this channel to 12 subscribers on this channel so I was really happy about that and I just want to thank you guys for supporting me through these past few months. Uh, I know it's not, a, it's not a big milestone but mathematically speaking going from 0 subscribers back in October to 10 subscribers now that feels infinitely more. And back then, my first video was about coding, so I felt it only appropriate to do something similar today as a way to celebrate this momentous occasion. I remembered that I used to struggle a lot when I learned when I was learning P5 JavaScript and trying to figure out how to rotate and translate objects and stuff around around the space on the screen. I figured out a way to do it. I'm not trying to make a professional tutorial video here or anything like that. I just want to show you guys how I did it and if you find that easy to do, great, hit that like button, <laughs> but I will link, I will put some links in the description below as well that can guide you on the process a bit and even uh, the link to this particular program. And I will not call this mahogany picture, which although while that does sound interesting, I will rename it to spinny squares. Squares, there we go, spinny squares. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So I'm just gonna do a square here, just to illustrate something first. Now assuming none of this is new to you guys, all I want to show today is how translations and rotations work. Now if I translate by 100 to the right, it should move to the right, but nothing happens, right? So not because I made a mistake, but just because I put the translation after the square. So if I move the translate before the square, And now you can see that the square has moved to the right. So if I put this a little more, it'll go even more to the right. So there you go. But the trouble with this is that even if I put it into the draw function, it will translate 200 units from where it used to be over to where it is right now, but it won't, it won't keep going 200 every time. Which is good and bad, really depends on how you look at it. So if I made some kind of counter like I, and then just add one or something every time, then it should start to move on its own. Oh, there you go. So when you have a counter, you are able to translate continuously across the screen. And it works the same way with, uh, with rotations. And it should do some kind of... Oh, okay, that's going crazy. <laughs> so... I'm not sure what's happening there. I think it's... A, just make this really small and see. So the... Just make the rotations a bit smaller. All right, yeah. So it seems to be rotating around... The... Or the... I don't know, the corner up here somewhere, I guess. And this is essentially the problem, isn't it? That when we use rotation, it tends to just rotate around the, around the wrong place. I want the square to rotate on the spot. So just to make things a bit easier to understand, first thing I'm gonna do is just get rid of all this. We don't need I at the moment. And if I run this, it's okay. So it's not gonna do anything. It's, it's rotated a little bit. If I change this to two, rotation of two, then it'll rotate a little more, I think. Oh, but it's gone. I don't know where it's gone off to. So uh, so that's a bit, it's a bit tricky to work with. So um, there's this thing called push and pop. I learned this very recently and this this is really useful. So when you push and pop, what that does is it, it isolates the object that you want to transform temporarily. And by doing so, you're not going to affect any other objects in space. So let me just get rid of the rotation for now and see what's happening. So right now we've translated 200 from where it used to be. The problem with translating and rotating at the same time is it tends to offset where it's rotating. So Simply put, when you transform things, you have to think of it in respect to this top left corner here. Everything references that corner. So if I want to rotate this thing, I have to treat it like as if it's rotating from the origin here. And the simplest way to describe this is to just say, we'll put the square at the origin, right? And then translate by 200, that's fine. Now, if you do the rotation as well, it will not rotate as much, although it's still, it's still gonna do some funny things if I just let it go, I think. So if I do it 
two here. Yeah, well, that's all right. It's, it looks like it's gonna rotate around itself there. So let's make a new variable and see how this works, if, we, if it's a counter. Okay, so we can see that it's rotating uh, more or less around its center, but it's rotating from one of the corners. So in other words, like if, if I were to comment these out, the square is being drawn from the corner. But if I place the square's center at the origin, I would have to, first of all, do it based on some mathematical calculation here, half the size, but shift it behind. Now we can only see a quarter of the square, the rest of the square is sticking out behind the screen. And if I, if I did a rotation based on this, you can see that the square is rotating in the corner now. I can make the square a little bit bigger just to illustrate this. Yeah, so the square is rotating. Now if I bring the translation back in, we can see that it moves 200 to the right and rotates on that spot. So this is what we're after, right? This is what we want to do. We don't want to be spinning things around some imaginary point. We want it to spin on its center. All right, so there we go. So we have a square that's spinning roughly in the center of the canvas. Now that we have this going, we can replicate this process for other shapes, right? So I, all I need to do is copy this whole push pop thing. All right, let's have a look. There we go, see? So now we have a green square that's rotating at 100, 100, while the red square rotates at 400, 400. So now if you want to take this a step further, we can make a class and in this shape class, we're going to replicate what we did. So once the constructor is complete, we can make a function for turning as well. So for turning, it will need some kind of angle. And this will use the previous code that we had here. And now we want to make an array for these squares. So we'll call it uh, squares, I guess. <laughs> and we're going to create the red and green squares again by using the push function. So we'll just define a new shape for each of them. And so there we go. So I've successfully replaced the basic coding with something that uses classes and arrays. And that's basically all there is to it. So we can get rid of this code now and replace it with more squares. And voila, we have four squares doing their own thing. Now, of course, they're all rotating the same way. So we can change that too. We can make the green square rotate uh, 10 times as fast, maybe make the blue square rotate twice as fast and the yellow square rotate five times the speed. And oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> maybe it's a bit too fast. I'll slow down the angle increments. Oh yeah, look at that, that looks nice. And you can also change the size, right? You can make them all different sizes, but you would have to define that in the class now, which is great because that means you don't have to change much except just what was going on in the class predominantly. And there we go. That looks great. So we have different squares, different sizes, different colors, different and rotating at different speeds in different positions. But they're not affecting each other because of one thing, we're using push and pop. So one of my favorite things to do with coding is once I've got everything organized, I like to throw things into chaos just a little bit. So I'll just comment out the pop just to see what this looks like when everything is rotating out of reference. And this is not what you really want, but <laughs> let's see what it looks like. Yeah, so, <laughs> so we don't want this happening, right? This is the problem that I always had back in before I understood how to do this. So push and pop makes a real big difference. When you put that into place, it allows you to transform everything individually without causing this kind of chaos. Now, of course, if this is what you want to do when you make a game or something, then go for it. But I just find this very confusing. It It's like a planet orbiting a planet, orbiting a planet, orbiting a planet. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed watching that. I, I don't know if that made any sense to you guys. I hope it did. Like I said, I'm not trying to teach the thing so much as I'm just trying to show how I do it. But if you guys found this helpful, then, then feel free to try it out in your own coding. Hit that like button, comment down below. So my next goal will just be 25 subscribers. I'll be pretty happy if this channel can achieve that in the next few months. And if it does, then uh, I might make a, like an animation coding video, something like that, to make use of what 
what I did here today. So if you guys want to see that, help me get to 25 subscribers. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so yet, and ring the bell to get notified when the next video comes out. Thanks so much for watching guys, have a good one, and I'll see you next time. Bye!